Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. We have another review for you. The TP-Link AC1300 Dual High Gain Extra Distance Wi-Fi Adapter. So this is a USB Wi-Fi adapter and uh, it's got dual antennas that spread apart and all that. I'll show you that in a second. Anyways, on the box, they claim the speeds to be 400 megabits per second at 2.4 gigahertz and 867 megabits at 5 gigahertz connection. Not 5G, but 5 gigahertz. Totally different. Um, we have 5 dBi high gain antenna system to more than triple our range within the household or maybe you're going to surf outside the house. You're going to get some much better range. USB 3.0 connection too. 10 times faster than USB 2.0. Now that, my friends, is full of it. Um, but you do have the MIMO technology in here, so it gives you like, I think it's Wi-Fi 4 or something like that. We'll check in a minute. So, here's the pretty little unit. It's nice and cute. It's gloss black. At least the base is. These are kind of, well, kind of semi-gloss. Anyways, so the antennas can actually spread right apart like this. So you can like paste it on your wall if you want. You can do this kind of thing if you want. Or you can do this, or you know, kind of like this. Move them around different directions really doesn't make a difference okay you can do that right so um <laughs> the cable is plugged into my computer but it's the exact same cable that plugs into uh most of your portable hard drives like this so your connection point to the actual unit looks like this and then of course your blue usb 3.0 connection on the other end into your laptop or tower desktop whatever okay so let me plug this little puppy back in Yeah, that's the right way. Oh, that is. Okay. There we go. You also get an included CD. Now, for Windows users, at least with Windows 10 people, for sure, you definitely will not need to download any of the drivers. Okay? Um, because it'll just find it. That's Windows 10 for you. And I'm running the latest version of Windows 10 on my PC. Man, what an update that was. So, anyways, it works perfectly fine with Windows 10, hassle-free. Now, for you Mac people like myself, who also runs both Mac, well, I run Mac and PC in my house. Some of you die-hard Macs are still like, PC suck! Well, you know, we'll talk about that in another day. So, the highest operating system for the Mac OS that this adapter will support is 10.15. The drivers are on the CD, you will need them, and you'll find them in one of the folders. Um, and you'll find different sets of drivers. The very bottom one on the list is for the newest Mac OS of 10.15. So use the corresponding driver for the OS you have. However, if you're above 10.15, um, you may run into some problems. And I guarantee you, if you are running Big Sur, Forget it. Do not buy this adapter because there are no drivers for Big Sur as of yet. And I've even been to the company's website and so far I can't find anything for Big Sur because if I could get something like this for Big Sur operating system, I'd be like so happy because my IMAX built-in Wi-Fi card sucks. Okay. Apple, if you're watching this video, okay, get your act together. Put proper Wi-Fi cards in our Mac computers, okay? We need speed. The days of old are gone. Anyways, enough of my rant there. Had to say it, though. So, <laughs> here's the scoop. Um, I'm going to let you guys in on what you don't know, okay? And many of you don't. And this is where you commonly get deceived. You get a little PO'd because you bought this really fast adapter and you didn't see any real increase. Well, there's a reason for that. And I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on. So, I don't care if you're on a Rogers Rocket Hub or Cellular Hub ZTE modem, okay, which uses cellular network, or if you have fiber optics coming in or cable or satellite, does not matter, okay? Now, with DSL, which runs through your phone line, okay, that little system, generally, the more you pay for a package, the faster the speed they'll sell you, okay? That's kind of how DSL works. Cable, not much different, okay? 
pretty much about the same kind of deal there. When you're looking at fiber optics, they do have very fast systems. However, the entire planet is not fiber optic yet. So even though you may have a fiber line coming in, it might not be fiber where they're hooking it up. It could be cable converted to fiber or who knows, right? We know this. Well, at least a lot of people do. Um, so not everybody is going to benefit from fiber just because they got fiber. Okay, for example, my father had fiber optic internet um, in North Bay on his house. Now, he has this fiber line that came from the outside, but it wasn't pure fiber. Okay, part of it was old system converted to fiber. So he wasn't getting full fiber speeds. I mean, come on, it's going to take them years to get that fiber optic system proper fiber fiber to every single home where it's 100% fiber through the entire thing right to the hubs, okay? In the, in the main central hub area. So either way, some people have benefited from pure fiber, others not really, but they did get a lot more speed, let me tell you, but not the full benefits of fiber. Either way, we have internet systems, but a wa faster Wi-Fi adapter does not guarantee you that you're gonna surf any faster, okay? your incoming connection to your device will have X amount of speed. Your device itself can handle X amount of speed. Your Wi-Fi card in there that connects to your Wi-Fi adapter to your computer has got its own limits too, okay? So, prime example, ZTE modems cannot connect anything more than 300 megabits per second with the router card that's built into that modem. So, and you can only get the 300 megabit connection two ways. One, okay, you have to have an adapter, okay? Two, you have to have at least 300 megabits coming in to the router to supply the Wi-Fi in that router to 300. That's the only way you're gonna get 300. Otherwise, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get an in and out packet of 300 megabits this way, 300 megabits that way so your adapter will go to 300 and your wi-fi router wi-fi it can go to 300 that gives you that 300 megabits per second in and out as far as capability as far as incoming signal goes ain't gonna happen baby unless it is at that speed and if it's beyond 300 you're still never going to see more than 300 tops so even rogers says that you get between 100 and I think it's 150 something like that or 175 to 300 and change and they're lying because their ZTE modems can only do 300 in and out however the service that they provide is nowhere near 300 guaranteed 5G okay in this phone I can connect to any 5G tower and I've been pretty darn close to a 5G tower. Now this phone is also on Rogers, okay? Now the SIM card in here is a nano SIM, same as what's used in my ZTE modem. Exactly the same, it's no different, okay? I can take the SIM out of there and slam it on my phone, okay? It'll work. So, but even 5G in this iPhone 12 mini, the most I can expect to see top end is maybe about 260. Okay, and that's being like super close to that, that 5G tower, okay? On LTE, 230s, okay? 190s, depending on my distance, that sort of thing, okay? That's what I can expect to see. Now, until they improve their delivery system to get closer to their 300s, it ain't gonna happen, okay? And the same goes for any of your other internet connections. The speed coming in, if it is faster than what your router has for capability, you're not going to see the benefit, okay? So, and it's more than likely a slower connection coming into your router, because generally, I would think anyways, okay, let's use the word assume, which is a very bad thing to do, okay? But let's assume that their router um, could actually handle, say, gigabit okay because right now um i've seen one of the companies their uh i think it's kojiko uh cable they're they're claiming gigabit ethernet the fastest ever ah! 
well, I have a gigabit Ethernet card in my computer, but unless their modem can actually produce one gigabit, okay, and have a gigabit coming in and produce that, I'm not going to see that. And the only way I'm going to see it, if it is there, on both sides on that modem so not only does the incoming signal have to be a gigabit but so does the router's Wi-Fi okay have to be able to produce the incoming and outgoing traffic of a gigabit your computer has to also do a gigabit as well so that's the only way you're gonna see one gigabit okay the same as the only way you're gonna see 300 megabits regardless now this adapter they claim over 800 megabits per second okay so that means to get 800 megabits even on the connection between this and your router your router has to also be able to supply what what's rated on the box then you'll get that connection right there but you still have the incoming signal itself has to be at least that as well to see that actual speed okay i'm hoping you're following me on this so as a, another example of this, I'm on the five gigahertz band right now on my computer. It says that my incoming and outgoing connection between my Wi-Fi adapter and my router is at 300 megabits per second in and out. Now, most people assume that's what I've got. No, you don't. You only have whatever's coming in. So if you go up to the internet and do a speed test, you're gonna see, <coughs> you know, like your, your ping and stuff, right? and it's gonna do a little speed test, that's what you're getting coming in and going out. Your connection doesn't make a difference. It's what's coming in, okay? Now, it could come in at 600, let's say. Let's say it comes in at 600, but you're only connected 300 to 300. You're not gonna see 600 show up on that screen. It can't do it because it bottlenecks the system and chokes it. It's kind of like, you know, trying, trying to shove a big huge tube of liquid into a small little straw it's gonna back up kids don't do it okay I mean <laughs> let's face it North Bay employees weren't the best years back and I don't even know if they fixed it but our house got flooded okay because they took a big huge pipe and they dropped it in the ground and put it into a little straw sized pipe <laughs> okay and all of our houses at the bottom of Algonquin and some houses traveling down to Algonquin, the sewage system backed up in our houses big time. And we had like water this flipping deep when we woke up in the morning. That's a really wet experience, isn't it? Because some engineer was not quite on the ball uh, when they did that. So equal flow, everything's cool, right? Trying to put this into this ain't gonna happen, okay? So that causes some grief. And when you go the opposite direction, where you got the skinny little straw here and the big thing here, instead of having a big, huge, massive flood of data going through, you're gonna have little trickles and that's it, okay? So your, your incoming internet connection bottom line has to be able to meet what your router can do to give you that, okay? And if your incoming connection exceeds what your Wi-Fi in your router and your Wi-Fi adapter has, you're only going to see whatever that connection rate can actually handle, which is going to be the Wi-Fi attached to the Wi-Fi wirelessly to your thing. Now, for those of you who do not know this too, by the way, I want to explain something else so you know. Ethernet connections. Um, do your testing yourself you may find that your ethernet bus is going to be faster than wi-fi it's possible okay because in theory it should be that theory is now <laughs> out the window uh at least with cellular type modems the zte rocket hubs by the way whether you're connected with rogers bell or virgin mobile or whoever you're with that has these things okay the ethernet ports in the zte modems cannot and i mean cannot connect at anything higher than 100 megabits per second that's it the wi-fi is faster as far as that connection goes okay so ethernet 
now sucks. So a gigabit Ethernet card is kind of pointless and useless unless your giga, your Ethernet on the other side is also a gigabit. Now, again, that's the same thing as Wi-Fi. You can have a gigabit here and a gigabit over at your router. You've plugged in your cable and your cable can handle that data, which is good. So you're going to need like Cat6 cable for that, okay, at least. So, but if your incoming internet signal is not a gigabit, you ain't going to see it. Okay, it's not gonna happen. You can do all the speed tests you want until you're blue in the face. It's not gonna happen. So anyways, I wanted to explain all this stuff to you guys in this video because some of this is gonna be reiterated, of course, in my following video that will be coming eventually about the, you know, what is the difference between 3G, 4G, 5G, and LTE when it comes to that sort of stuff. And we're gonna talk about that because I think that's very important too because a lot of people also don't seem to understand that. However, that being said, is this thing good? Yes. Is it worth the money? Flipping yes. You definitely got that right. Is it a quality built unit? Yes. Totally love it. Is it fully compatible with Windows 10 and below? Apparently it is, but I only have Windows 10 to verify that, so definitely thumbs up. Okay. Is it compatible with Macintosh? Yes, it is, but only up to OS 10.1.5. Anything past that, like I said, may or may not work. Guaranteed it won't work on Big Sur. Apple is also about to release a new revamped operating system. So, yeah, you might as well hold your socks on and don't buy even a Big Sur compatible one because probably not going to be compatible with the new OS. So wait for it. You know, that's what I'm thinking. And that's driving me nuts with what Apple's doing with their OS updates too. Now, this also has a two-year warranty with it too, by the way, I should mention. So where do we put this thing? I want to put this thing... I'll, I'll, I'll give it four and a half out of five. Is that good? I mean, I think it's good, but do you think it's good? Well, I think that it's a worthwhile purchase. It's a nice adapter. It's better than the other ones that we had by Focus Max. A little more expensive, you know, because they were like cheap compared to this. A um, lot more range too. So if you're thinking, well, I want more range. Now here's something too, as far as range goes. Um, the Focus Max adapters, when I go 100 feet away from the house, which is where my shop is, Okay, the Focus Mac does connect, but it's pretty weak. Okay, this I'm hoping fixes that problem. I will do further testing on that and get back to you later on in the summer about that one. Um, I'm still waiting for RAM to come in for my laptop, my new, my new laptop. So I'll be testing that out in the shop at a later date and I'll just score this one off my computer for you know the testing and we'll see how good it is for over 100 feet away because it also has to try and eat through brick and metal in the building and get to the to my router so you know and it is actually about 100 feet away from my shop so i have 100 foot power cable and i think i have about maybe 10 feet left over of playroom and that's it so yeah we we know we're at least within that 100 feet anyways that's all i got for you guys today and i really hope this video helped you out and to help you understand internet connections as well so if you buy something that's really super fast and you're not seeing an increase in speed, at least now you know why. You're not seeing the increase in speed. However, it is still worth buying the faster adapters so that you know if you do get a hardware upgrade to your, to your thing or a firmware update that speeds things up a little bit more, that sort of thing, then at least you would be able to take advantage and you've already got the right adapter already. Now this adapter is not the end all to be all, but for, for $33 Canadian, I mean, it's definitely a quality built unit. It works fantastic. I've been running the snot out of it since I got it and it's doing really well so far. So cross fingers, knock on wood, and we're all good to go. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. I got a lot more cool stuff coming for you guys. And we're going to talk a lot more computer tech this year as well, too, to help you guys out. So if this video was helpful to you and you did like it, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already and smash the bell for notifications. If you didn't like the video, well, you know what to do anyways. Just be polite in your comments is all I ask. You know, I like to keep things clean on the channel. Until next time, see ya!